So finally, we got to spend some time with Realme UI 2.0 on our X50 Pro. And in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the most important new features that Realme has brought to the table with Realme UI 2.0. Now guys, disclaimer, this version of Realme UI, it is built on Android 11. And that means a lot of Android 11 functionality is baked in, but we've discussed Android 11 a lot in older videos. So I'm not gonna repeat myself with regards to Android 11 features. We're just gonna be focusing on what new functionality Realme has brought to the table. So without further ado, Ash here, you're watching C4E Tech and let's get started. Cosmetic changes first, let's start with the lock screen. Well, okay, not exactly the lock screen, the always on part of the lock screen. Jump into settings and we can see that there are a lot of new options to choose from. There are different patterns, each with their individual customization options. Like we can change colors, display the time as either digital or analog, even select what information it gets to show. If custom patterns are what float your boat, that's here too. Now, if patterns aren't really your thing, you can opt for different styles of text, the combination of pictures and text, and of course the classic different styles of analog and digital clock faces. Now, since we are already in the settings menu, let me quickly show you one more awesome customization option here. Dark mode looks amazing on AMOLED panels, right? Now, Realme this time around, gives us three contrast options uh, to suit our tastes. Gentle is the lightest of the lot, almost grayish. Maybe something I'd say you can opt for if you're using a phone with an LCD display. Then we have medium and finally enhanced for pitch black. That's definitely the one you're gonna have to go with if your display is AMOLED. Turn off on pixels and all that. Dark mode now uh, can also adjust the wallpaper as well as the icons to better fit the theme. And the last toggle here, it reduces contrast so that the bright whites don't blind you if you're using dark mode in the night under low light when you just wake up or something. Now moving on, uh, like with other custom interfaces like, hey, MIUI, Realme also lets you share Wi-Fi credentials via QR code now. And I feel that's pretty cool because you don't have to go around giving your uh, passwords out. And given there are a lot of IoT devices these days, uh, we have all of that pre-configured setup. So changing the passwords just for security, that's very difficult these days because say for example, you have a smart home setup, then you're gonna have to reconfigure everything if you change your Wi-Fi password. So having a QR code option to share credentials, I mean, of course, the best way to do it would be to have uh, a guest network, but if not, this is a good little uh, middle ground. Okay, now on a similar note, let's jump into Bluetooth settings. Under advanced, we can toggle on the display codec standard. So one quick glance, and you can tell if your earphones are streaming using AAC or aptx HD. Neat, right? Now talking about sound here under sound and vibration, okay, this is not really about sound, but you know, under sound and vibration, that's my segue. You can tinker around with the vibration intensity. I love haptic feedback, and I hate it when a certain brand cuts it out of their mid-rangers, but story for another day. Now, uh, while typing, I actually like haptic feedback a lot, and with third-party keyboards like SwiftKey, for a long time, they've allowed us to change the vibration intensity, uh, but being built into the software is always an option that's nice to have. And now let's quickly jump to the home screen. Pulling down the notification shade reveals a new translucent look. We can actually make out the wallpaper in the background. The quick toggle icons, they've also been pushed down just a little bit. I'm guessing for easier single-handed usage. And that's not all. See the circle with a face on it? This lets you switch between different user profiles. This is one feature that's usually missing on most custom Android skins. Now given phones are pretty personal devices, I understand why they omit it. But if, you, if you're one of the niche uh, demographic who actually finds use from this, then it's an option that's available. And then we, have, we also have Get System Cloner. So check this out. Uh, blue wallpaper, right? Now if I unlock scanning my thumb, you get to see another profile, one that has this red wallpaper. Unlock with the index finger and the blue wallpaper profile. These are basically two profiles and the option to unlock them using different fingerprints is just too sweet. Speaking of fingerprints, you guys noticed the fingerprint animations, right? We get a lot more of them here from under the personalization tab. So set up the theme, change wallpaper, customize the always on display, choose between different icon styles, app layouts, colors, text, edge lighting, and of course, fingerprint styles. 
There's even an option to change the shape of the quick toggles here. So a lot of granular control has been provided. Now some of these customization features can be accessed directly from the home screen itself. Holding down on an empty space brings up this menu and from here we can choose all these different options. My favorite new home screen feature though, it's gotta be the icon pull down gesture. So swiping up from the edges of the screen will make all these icons come down and you can easily access them one handed. Now, given the growing screen sizes, this is such a well thought out implementation, one I can definitely see myself using. With multitasking, you get to resize apps into a tiny mini window and have them running to the side, like basically chat heads but with preview. Now tap on it and you get to make them float. Well, not something we've never seen before, it's still hand handy nonetheless. The smart sidebar has also received a small update. Functionality wise, everything here remains the same, no changes. But if you press the add button, there's a nice organized menu with tools and apps divided into separate tabs. Another area where we've gotten a minor yet useful update is with the app drawer. We can hide, manage and even sort apps by alphabetical order, install, install time or what's most used. The select function here lets you choose a bunch of apps and uninstall them all at once. Now, for phones which do come with bloatware, this is an awesome option to have. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I don't crib a lot about Xiaomi's bloatware, especially when I import the phone, uh, because you can just select them all and boom, it's gone and now Realme's got that too. Game space has also got, been rehauled. First, there's a new gamery look. Then we get three performance modes and with supported games, game space now lets you drop down the resolution. This is quite exciting actually. On weaker hardware, this should still let you have a smooth gaming experience, albeit at a loss of resolution. The quick startup option here, in theory, it should make the most often launched games launch faster. And this is something we're gonna have to test. Uh, next, the Photos app. This is new row that divides the pictures and videos into easily accessible albums like favorites, people, location, etc. Focus mode has also gotten a few new tricks. Uh, by the way, in case you didn't know, focus mode is basically Realme's version of Zen UI. Zen mode, I'm sorry, what was I even thinking? Zen mode, <laughs> and it's gotten uh, the original Zen mode feature with intense focus. So basically, once it's turned on, you cannot return back to normal usage till that timer expires. That said, you can set exceptions that bypass focus mode. So you can still choose to receive certain app notifications if you feel they're super important. So maybe emails, WhatsApp, but honestly, WhatsApp just defeats the purpose. That's not all here. Behind the scenes, Realme UI 2.0 seems to be big on security. The pseudo-based station blocking, which should technically reduce the number of spam calls and messages by identifying them and letting you block them with a single tap. Payment protection is also available, which is supposed to increase security for online transactions. So these are Realme's new features that have come with Realme UI 2.0. So what do you think about this? Do you feel it's a good little feature set or do you feel it's uh, very similar to what we've seen from a different UI? You know the one I'm talking about. If you do, leave a comment. And guys, I'll also leave the eligibility list on screen. So if you have a Realme phone and you're wondering if your phone is eligible for the update, you can actually figure that out from here. And with that, we finally get to the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name is Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.